Um, I really wanted to like this series, but why is it sometimes, actually a lot of times, that Marvel gets a mediocre pass? Hi, my name is Michael S. Garner, and I do comic book related TV shows and movie reviews. Actually, just my thoughts on them and everything like that. Um, just because I do love comic books, growing up with them and everything like that, and I actually write and draw my own online comic book. Um, it's nothing big, just a self published thing. So I just, uh, I just like to give my opinions and everything like that on it. And um, this is the uh, first season of WandaVision. This is episode three. It has finally come out the other night. And uh, I was actually going to wait until the actual Friday to watch it, but I was up late and I'm usually up pretty late, so I decided to watch the episode before going to bed. I wasn't tired, by the way. And <laughs> this is gonna, this, there's a point to this part. Um, I was not tired when I was watching this, uh, when I was watching this episode, but I became very tired when I was watching this very episode. <laughs> and I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried. And I really, 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 really want to support uh, Marvel going into the TV realm, and I really want to support them doing this kind of different version of Marvel. It's not even a different version of Marvel, but for them to tap into something different in the TV area. And I like the homage, uh, sorry, the homage, um, to, um, to, you know, the past sitcoms and everything like that. And, and I always say this, full disclosure, I grew up with sitcoms. I grew up with I Love Lucy. I grew up with The Brady Bunch. I grew up with Gilligan's Islands. I grew up with Laverne and Shirley. I grew up with all of these things. I loved them growing up. I watched them in a loop. And they weren't even a part of my time period. They just ran them in reruns. So I watched all of this stuff. I love black and white and sitcoms and everything like that. I watched so many when I was younger. I Dream of Genie, all this stuff. So I know all this stuff almost verbatim. But Marvel's attempt at trying to make this intriguing and you trying to find out a mystery. For me, it's not. I, I feel bad and I love Elizabeth Olsen and I love Paul Bettany as the Vision. I love them both as well. I just really want to say this. Um, but this is not making me think at all. This is not even making me have any nostalgia. This is just making me go, get on with the damn goddamn story. Just go, go with the story. Because right now, um, I'm glad this episode, just to break it down really quickly, I usually have notes, like, in front of me, just, like, just I stand subject and everything like that, but there's nothing really to explain here. Um, if you haven't watched the episode, obviously don't watch this video. But in the episode, we're basically seeing the breakdown of Wanda, what is actually really happening in this world that she's in. And obviously now it's come to the point where I think I said it in a prior video that she created this world herself, like in the House of M comic book storyline. Um, she has created this place, but she has trapped people in it. And I don't know if she's necessarily trapped people in it, or they came in to try to get her out, and they got trapped in there. But, for what happens with her interaction with Monica Rambeau, if you do not know, um, the girl that she comes in contact with at the end who helps her with her pregnancy, uh, that helps her with her sudden pregnancy, uh, it happened in comic books. Not gonna, not gonna complain there. This is how we get, um, basically... Uh, the younger Avengers and everything like that. If you don't know that. She has two children. They grow up to be uh, Wiccan and Hulkling and all this stuff like that. Not even going to go into that. But she has the two boys. Um, and it was it was a cute scene and everything like that. But I'm sitting there going like, are we going to go on for this for like 30 minutes? By the way, it wasn't even 30 minutes. I think it was 23 minutes. And then a credit started the roll. And I'm like, we have seven minutes of credits? Oh, uh, all right. But I was watching this. And um, I, I really wanted to be taken back like oh my god what's happening but I just wasn't nothing was surprising me I'm like okay so we know what's gonna basically happen now I'm like I felt like this episode could have been episode two they could have shortened episode one until like 15 minutes and they could have put this in there and I'm not saying that I just want to go back to the Marvel Universe I'm just saying that I don't think that this whole thing of her being in this world is that intriguing enough to us sit in that world for an entire episode because it's not working in my opinion I know a lot of people um I'm going off subject here, but I, I've, I've seen reviews and everything like that. I've seen other people talk about the show in detail, sometimes for like an hour or two hours. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Which is it? Like, they're reading so much into it. And I'm like, there's nothing really to read. This is very surfacy. This is so incredibly surfacy. Like, we're skirting on the surface. We're actually in the air. This is just so much on the surface. Um, I don't find anything intriguing, thought-provoking, or anything about this. I find it very simple. Very simple. 
Um, and I wish I, I enjoyed it more, but I'm not. I'm just like, I'm dragging through. And I'm just like, just get to the point now. Um, but to recap the episode, Wanda basically uh, becomes pregnant twice and she has two kids and Monica Rambeau. I can't remember her name of her character inside the um, inside the world that um, she's created, um, but she helps her with the pregnancy. And throughout that whole process, Envision's starting to realize that something's going wrong again because he realized it before and then she changed the world in the color and they went to Brady Bunchville. Um, but uh, in a prior episode, but in this one, he starts to realize something else is going on. He goes outside as, you know, she's dealing with the pregnancy inside and everything like that and take care of the kids. And he talks to the neighbor played by Catherine Hahn and the other neighbor. And they basically try to tell him what's going on, but they can't because they're afraid. They're really afraid because they know that they're caught in this world and everything like that. And um, I'm like, OK, that scene lasted for too long. I get the point. And then we go back inside and something jars Monica Rambeau out of it. And she realizes where she is. And Wanda realizes that. That's the one part that I was like, hmm, get dark. Get dark now. And Wanda is like, what are you? Is there something wrong? And she, you know, she jettisons her out of uh, her little environment that she created, her little world. And that was kind of cool, but we kind of saw that in the previews anyhow. Uh, so she uh, flicks her out of her little uh, world, and we see the outside world and everything like that, and how she's in a supposed dome and everything like that. And this is this is all stuff that was done before. So um, that's basically the the meat of the episode. She got her kids. She threw Monica Rambo out. Um, if you don't know who Monica Rambo is, I feel bad. Like if, if you're not like a really big comic book person, you don't have to be to watch this stuff, obviously. Um, but Monica Rambo is one of the Captain Marvels or Miss Marvels in the comic books. Um, more famously known because she's an African American superhero, and uh, back then there weren't that many, and um, and a lot of people actually wanted her to be Captain Marvel in the movies, which I would argue, no, that's fine. We'll let her come later, and I'm glad she's in this series because they can develop her more and everything like that. I can't wait to see her use her powers. Can't wait to see her use her powers. Um, but um, but yeah, and uh, she's the daughter of uh, Captain Marvel's uh, Air Force uh, pilot friend. I can't remember right now um, her name. Um, but yeah, and, uh, yeah, this is basically the episode and I, I can't, I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to give ratings or anything like that, but I just like, like I said, nothing really surprised me about this episode. It was just like, okay, we know we're in this world. She has a conflict with Monica Rambeau because she starts to remember things that are going on and she flicks her out and throws her out into the real world. And, um, hopefully we see more stuff. Oh, sorry. Yeah. There was a commercial. And I believe it was, not sword, what was it? I, I, I don't know. It wasn't even that important. Um, it was a soap commercial and everything like that. Yeah, it's a harken back to one of the agencies, as many agencies in Marvel and DC, um, uh, that are probably uh, monitoring uh, Wanda in this world and everything like that. Uh, sword, uh, whatever. It doesn't even really matter. It's not going to be that. I mean, it'll be there, but it's not going to be like, oh, gosh, it's a huge surprise. So I feel bad. Um, I want them to get to the point. For the third time now and um i do i enjoy watching this series but right now it's not like blowing me away in any type of way it's just surfacey and it's right there um but I'm interested in see what the next episode's going to be i believe that there are only six episodes uh scheduled for the season and everything like that so after this episode hopefully it's going to ramp up more because we're already at episode three so we're at that halfway point um and even if there's eight episodes in this series we're almost to that halfway point <laughs> so go Run to the horse. Just run. Because this is this is taking too damn long. And I wanna see uh I wanna see Wanda go crazy. Cause we saw a little bit of it, and that part I loved. Love seeing her go a little crazy. And um yeah, so that's uh that's basically my take on this episode of WandaVision season two, episode three. Um what did you guys think? I know you probably disagree with me a lot on this. You probably think this is revolutionary and you love it. <laughs> that's that's your opinion. I perfectly I perfectly understand that. Um, everybody has their own opinions about things, and I'm just expressing mine. And um, yeah, just tell me what you think about it. Where do you think it's going to go? Do you think there's something a little bit more than what I'm thinking of about this series? Like, there's something deeper there that I'm not seeing. If there is something, just let me know down below. I just I really do want to know your opinions on this. I want to talk to somebody about this because I don't really have anybody to talk to about here. I, I'm sorry, I don't have any really anybody around here to talk to about this, um, at least in the detail that it deserves and everything. And um, and you know this is revolutionary for Marvel. Movies going into TV, they haven't really done it before. Don't count Agents of Shield, even though I'm a lover of Agents of Shield after season one. Don't count that. So. 
My name is Michael S. Garner. Like I said, I do comic book related TV shows and reviews and sometimes comic books. And um, if you like my uh, content and everything like that, you can subscribe to the page and get notifications when I put up a new video and all that stuff. Um, also, I draw and write my own online comic book. If you want to check that out, it is called Visions of the New, which is at magcloud.com. You can check out the previews there, download a PDF, do whatever you want, uh, check out the book. There's nothing really new on there. It's been a while, but um, you can check out the two books that I have on there now. And until next time, I hope you guys have a great day.